TV News. Obamacare is on the horizon. We'll tell you when you can sign up and start receiving benefits. Thinking of giving birth in a parking lot? Neither were they. We'll tell you how it went. Catching the bus at the transit center should become easier. Stay tuned to check out the newest upgrades. The rain is back, but there's a better fall in the near future. I'll tell you about it on ATV Weather. Grass or turf? Which would you rather land on? We'll tell you what's safer coming up on ATV Sports. It's all coming up on ATV News! Welcome to ATV News, I'm Jason Borba. And I'm Jenna Lynn. Last night around 7.30, multiple 911 calls were made about a two-car accident. The collision happened at 1900 North and 1600 East in North Logan. Witnesses say this Nissan Sentra heading eastbound failed to stop at the intersection and collided with this Buick Enclave heading northbound. The Buick ended up in bushes from the impact after narrowly avoiding a house. Several children were in the Sentra. Some were treated at the scene and others were taken to a nearby hospital. President Obama's Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, will be put into action starting January 1st of next year. But you can sign up for the new healthcare system as early as next week. That everybody should have some basic security when it comes to their healthcare. Yeah. Open enrollment for Obamacare will begin Tuesday and be open for people to sign up until March 31st. This period of time is there to give people an opportunity to get their health insurance figured out before they are required by law to have insurance on the 1st of January. A Cache Valley couple welcomed the newest addition to their family a little earlier than expected. Colby and Jeanette Market Martin left the hospital last Thursday with a brand new baby, but this little guy wasn't an easy addition. The Martins said they were on their way to the hospital when they had to pull over into this high school parking lot after Jeanette's water broke. She did all the work really. Um, I just had to catch the baby and then uh, shortly after the paramedics showed up and, and they were able to help me just clamp the cord. The Cache Valley High School is only two blocks from the hospital. Both mother and son are healthy. The Utah State Journalism and Communications Department offers many opportunities for their students. The newest one, expanding radio. The JCOM Department and Utah Public Radio have merged together to create a new learning opportunity within the department. The plans are to add intermediate and advanced level radio classes to the already existing beginning level classes. JCOM Department Head Tom Jer Terry says that he does not anticipate the merger leading to any changes in the UP UPR staff. Terry says that the union could lead to special projects around the state as well as job opportunities for the students. There's a lot of complaints nationwide that students don't come out of college knowing how to actually get a job. That's something we're extremely strong at here is creating the skills and, and, and providing the opportunities whether it's an internship uh, in Salt Lake City or in Atlanta or in Washington or wherever it is. We'll have more information about the merger on next week's show. If you ride the city bus, there is a good chance that you may have noticed the construction going on at the Cache Valley Transit Center. The CVTB is undergoing a makeover that will see big changes come to the transit center. The old concrete was stripped away and replaced with new concrete that is headed, heated by underground water pipes to help melt the snow and ice in the winter. The busway is now wider to help buses maneuver around more easily and they added four more bus zones, bringing the number from 17 to 21. New covered canopies will be added to these bus zones and a bike storage facility will also be put into place. Salt Lake Express users can buy their tickets at the new ticket booth going up outside the transit center. Another big upgrade coming to the center is a parking lot where you can park your car and then ride the bus. Randy Parks of the CBTD said, said that the new transit center will help make it safer and more enjoyable experience for the bus riders. 
So with those improvements, it'll, it'll help us uh, continue to uh, provide uh, quality and safe uh, public transit for the, for the citizens and residents of the Cache Valley. The $1.1 million project began in June and is expected to be completed next summer. Coming up, we'll show you where your dog could soon be running free and... Did you know USU has a paintball club? I'll have more coming up. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, we have pep talkers standing by to get you motivated for your GED diploma. Text the name Terry to 69222 for a sympathetic pep talk. You show people what you really are. Or for a gentle pep talk, text the name Deborah. You know you're going to make people very proud of you. And if that's not enough, text the name Danny for an extreme pep talk. Prove everyone wrong. Show them you're the boss. Get your GED pep talk and find free GED classes. Text the name of the person you want a pep talk from to 69222. Here at the GED Pep Talk Center, NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. You can't take your dog anywhere in Logan without a leash because of city laws. But a new dog park in town lets you and your pet friend run free. Our Marie Tita shows us what all the bark is about. These dogs may be on leashes now, but they won't have to be for much longer. Because this five acre field will soon be the only off leash dog park in Cache Valley. The master plan shows the new dog park is being built right behind the Cache Valley Humane Society. We are trying to develop one that's a comprehensive park for families and people and well behaved dogs. Lola. Which some owners look forward to. You can kind of just let the dogs off the leash and go run and do their thing and then to wear them out and then take them back home. When the dog park is finished, they'll allow dogs big and small to be off leash. The park serves another purpose too. It's also an emergency preparedness site for the animals. If there were a big fire, if there were an earthquake, if there were, you know, mudslides, if for some reason people had to find a place for their pets to go, there's really no place for them to be taken. We want this five acres to be available for, you know, lost animals. If you just can't wait for Valley View Park to be done, you can go volunteer yourself at the Humane Society to speed up the process. I would say that last year we had 2,000 hours of volunteer help. A lot, of the, a lot of this would only be possible with groups from the university. We've had high school groups, Boy Scout groups, uh, community groups. And that's good for you and your dog. Marie Tietze, ATV News. The Cache Valley Humane Society will now start phase two of the dog park construction, allowing them to elevate the park, build a new irrigation system, and add a parking lot. You've heard about the climate change. You know it's a usually a doom or gloom subject, but one group from Utah State does something different to inspire change. We went out to show you the effects music has to the subject of global sustainability. The Crossroads Project is really an experiment in communicating sustainability and climate change science. The idea is, is some very compelling information supported with some vivid, compelling imagery and then unleashing on that some very powerful music. It needed to go beyond information, facts and figures. So yeah, the music, I can't, gosh, that's all of it actually. By bringing in this music from the Fry Street Quartet, Robert Davies believes he can impact more than with just his words alone. Rather than having somebody stand up in front of you um, delivering a lecture, it's, it's nice to be able to experience it with both uh, science, art, and expression. But even still, this topic can seem overwhelming for some people. So another goal of the Crossroad Project is to bring in live audiences to show them they are a group that could make a difference. Somehow coming together in a space like this to experience a performance and contemplate it together amongst other people 
to me is important because we are in this together. The Crossroads project started right here on the Utah State campus before taking it to campuses all over the country and even the world. We performed it in Los Angeles, in Boston, Mexico, Brazil, and we have a tour in the New York, New York area coming up, including Symphony Space in, in Manhattan. To learn more about what you can do to contribute to the Crossroads Project, you can go to crossroadsproject.org. USU club sports teams have a history of success. We have become good at both hockey and baseball. But there's another competitive club. And if you don't mind getting a little paint on your clothes, it might be the right one for you. Our Eric Jumblet is live outside to tell us more about the USU Paintball Club. Eric? Yeah, guys, the USU Paintball Club has a course out in Smithfield, and I went out there over the weekend to check out one of their games. Now, these guys are all about having a little fun and playing together as friends, but they're shooting each other at the same time. There's a war going on in northern Cache Valley. And if you get shot, it doesn't hurt getting hit. Well, it's just paintball. The USU Paintball Club holds games on weekends, and they also compete against teams from across Utah. We decided, hey, let's put a team in, so we decided to play a, a three-man tournament just a couple weeks ago, and we ended up uh, down in Ogden, ended up uh, placing first. So we're hoping to continue that through the rest of the season and uh, come out on top. The club is trying to get some games in before the weather starts to turn, so they are turning this patch of land on 4600 North into their canvas. The club says paintball is a great way to get the adrenaline pumping. There's no other sport where you can actually be in a situation where you get to shoot each other that much, and, and, and it, it, it's just really exciting to be able to, to dodge the, the paint and, and try to get them out before they get you. It's such a unique adrenaline rush. Like I'm, I'm big into any sport. Um, I played football since I was eight, baseball, basketball. Um, I snowboard, I ski just anything that really gets the blood going and paintball is really the most unique out of that. In addition to having international students in the club, some members like Trevor Ross have to travel quite a ways to play paintball. I actually live down in Provo area so so I do uh, a couple hours. Uh, I'm, I, I am an Aggie though, um, born and raised in Logan and will always bear the, the Aggie logo. Yeah, so the paintball club has been around for about a year now, but some of the members of the club have been playing for eight or more years, some of them. So they know their stuff, and they can show you a thing or two if you want to go out and try out paintball, if you think it's something you might want to try in the future. Back to you, Jenna. Awesome. Thanks, Eric. The paintball club is always looking for new members. You can email the club at usupaintball at gmail.com for more information. When we come back, our own Lee Kubik will have your Cache Valley weather report. But before we go, here are our current temp temperatures around the area. Thanks for calling the GED Pep Talk Center. Jerry Stiller speaking. Your level seven in your face pep talk. I can keep pushing. Believe me, I'm good at it. But at some point, you're gonna need to start pushing yourself. See, once you've got your GED diploma, You'll feel so good about yourself. You tell them. You can't change your past, but you can definitely change the future. That makes me so happy, I'm ready to bust out a dance. Mr. Trejo, can I transfer this guy to you? My gentle technique isn't really working. You need something a little more... Persuasive? Yes! You listen, and you listen good. You wouldn't let money just blow out of your house. So when your AC or heater is on, make sure the doors, windows, and fireplace flue are shut tight. If you're headed out, turn down the AC or lower witness bullying. Oh, look! Your crush is looking at you. <laughs> Poor you. They want to help, but don't know how. See, no one here is going to help you. because no one Teach your kids you. how to be more than a bystander. Visit StopBullying.gov.
So guys, it, it was raining this morning. It was just nuts. Did you guys have to bust out your umbrellas? And it wasn't just rain, it was freezing rain. That was not fun at all. Yeah, I pulled out my umbrella because that's what manly men do. All right, well, let's take a look outside to see if it's still raining. Okay, it, it, it's not raining anymore, guys, but that doesn't mean it's not cold out there. It is brisk, it is windy. Have fun walking around. As you can see, we got some snow coming up in the mountains. But now we're going national radar, and as you can see, we've got some storms up in the northeast, northwest, sorry, and they're coming down our way to Utah. And then there's more down in the, wet, in the, in the Texas area, and Florida's getting some storms too. And so now let's bring it back to Utah. There's Utah. And so, as you can see, like I said, in Logan area, here it is, Brigham. It's not going to get as far as Salt Lake or Provo. We're getting the brunt of it. Unfortunately, that's what we get for living so far up here. Then, but it's going to get better as the week goes on. And here's our seven day. Today, like I said, rainy, stormy, high of 57, low of 39. Okay, then as you can see, we get to the weekend. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, it's going to start to warm up, 70s. And it's... You know, you can still get sunburnt in the fall. You can get sunburnt in the fall, and you got sunburnt on Sunday. Right Crazy. side, completely burnt. Only man that I know that gets sunburnt in September. Only man. I don't know. Thank you, That's Lee, crazy. for that. Thank you, Lee. Coming up, is it safer to play on grass or turf? We'll tell you what students think after the break. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk. Separate raw meats from other foods by using different cutting boards. 3,000 Americans will die from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at Food Safety. Welcome to ATV, ATV Sports. I'm Brandon Fonda. Soccer had a home game. Football was battling it out at the Coliseum. But let's start a little closer to home. Intramurals are starting up, and along with the great goals and terrific touchdowns, you may have seen broken bones or sprained ankles. But there's been a big change to the program, and you've probably walked right by it. We took to the field to show you the story. One, two, three. The one team! Every fall semester, about 1,200 students play intramural sports. And when the competition heats up, so does the risk of injuries. Sprained ankles, knees, um, you know, we've had some serious injuries. We've had a, we've had a broken leg. Um, we've had separated shoulders. Those types of injuries led to a change at USU. This. The turf that we have out there is it, it's more of a, of a level surface. It's soft. What we were playing on before was really compact dirt. So when people would fall, cut, roll their ankles, it was really uneven. In the fall of 2011, with grass fields, 746 players played, and there were 14 major injuries. Fall of 2012, with the turf. 1,264 players and only 13 injuries. That means after intense plays like this, players are getting back up. Players like Dave Pyle, who's had injuries in the past and is now happy about the new fields. I like that it's just a better field. Um, the previous one had a lot of uh, divots in it and a lot of rolled ankles that I saw. This one's really flat and nice and I think it helps out a lot. I've fallen down a couple times on it. it it's honestly not that bad. Uh, it doesn't hurt as much, it seems like, so that's really nice as well. Not only is it safer now, 
With the addition of the turf and lights, more students are coming out to play. The atmosphere here, it, it brings a crowd. Even the spectator count has gone through the roof. Which has students excited. Now, unfortunately, the fields haven't decreased the fake injuries and flops in soccer, but for the most part, it's been a positive for intramurals. The women's soccer team was looking to bounce back after a tough winless streak against Arkansas, Cal State, Fullerton, and Utah when they hosted Weber State Sunday. The Aggies were hoping to match the football team's success against Weber as they returned home. The Aggies had a chance early as Lauren Roundy makes a deep pass to Jen Flynn, who whose shot soars over the goal. Then early in the second half, the Wildcats strike for the goal. As the game came to an end, Utah State had some chances, including this deep shot that clanks off the post. However, when the final whistle blew, the score favored Weber State, and the Aggies now move on to conference play. It's a brand new conference. Some of the teams are familiar with, some of them we aren't. And it's just, it's a good, you know, it's the new, new start of the season when you hit this mark. conference playing Reno against Nevada on Friday. USU has, USU has played in some big BCS schools for the last three years now and they've been all close games. In 2010 versus Oklahoma, the Aggies came back but couldn't pull off the upset. In 2011 versus the defending champions Auburn, the Tigers ran a kickoff back, then got the onside kick and scored in the final seconds to win that game. 2012 version of Wisconsin, the Aggies barely missed a field goal to lose as the game expired. Utah State was hoping this year would be different as they went to Los Angeles to take on USC. USC got the scoring started with a one-yard touchdown run by Trey Madden in the first quarter. Utah State running back Joey DiMartino would run for 55 yards, nearly getting the touchdown before being pushed out of bounds by USC defense. However, this would set up an eight-yard scoring strike from Chucky Keaton to Brandon Swindle. USC would take, wouldn't take long to respond as Cody Kessler threw a 30-yard touchdown to Xavier Grimble to put USC up 14-7 at halftime. Utah State wouldn't get things going until the second half as Keaton would connect with Travis Reynolds for a 10-yard touchdown to tie the game at 14. USC scored the final points of the game on a field goal, and, US, and Utah State wasn't able to move the ball and convert on this fourth down play. USC would win with a final score of 17-14. to 14. The Aggies will head to San Jose State to take on the Spartans this Friday at 7 p.m. That was a heartbreaker. I, the, the USC defense was just so good, and, and the, the, the USC offensive line couldn't do anything. Yeah, sad. yeah poor Chucky was uh, pressured the whole game. It's unfortunate, but maybe next time. Thanks, maybe. Brandon. When, when we come back, we'll show you how some Utahns celebrate a famous foreign festival. And <laughs> find out why so many people are wearing flapper costumes. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. The annual event Oktoberfest is back this year at Snowbird. Caesar Abbott shows us more about this famous German festival and what it brings to Utah. Have you ever wanted to experience a different culture but don't have the money to travel? A version of the famous German festival Oktoberfest is celebrated every year at Snowbird, with this year running every weekend until October 13th. 
Open to the general public, Oktoberfest brings something different to Utah. Oktoberfest is a great introduction to culture for students. It is an inspiration and can possibly lead to a further study abroad. Inside Oktoberfest grounds, you can experience several traditional German activities while kids enjoy their own thing. Not only can you drink beer at Oktoberfest, there's a lot of family activities, including a live concert just right behind me. I come from Germany. I am from Germany and the Oktoberfest in Germany has been going on for about 200 years. Now I am in America participating at the Oktoberfest in Snowbird. It is very exciting. One can do a lot of things with the family and also alone. Everyone gets to learn the German experience and the family can participate in many activities. It is a wonderful thing. Caesar Rabbit, ATV News. If you'd like to know more about Oktoberfest, visit snowbird.com. Drinking and gambling in costumes isn't usually what you see at school parties, but hundreds of people came to the Great Gatsby Ball to do all that and more. Victoria Hepworth is live with us to tell us more. Victoria? Hey guys, yeah, the 20s were a very artistic time, and so hundreds of people showed up just like this to have a good time. <laughs> Lots of people were dancing, gambling, smoking, eating pizza, and watching Great Gatsby at this year's literary ball. Great Gatsby is one of my favorite uh, Scott Fitzgeralds. Uh, it's just uh, it's such a great novel that he wrote. Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald was written in the 20s. The English department decided to throw a ball honoring the book thought of it because I thought it would be a fun era to do and then when the movie coming out it seemed really apropos. <laughs> In his book Fitzgerald criticizes the craziness of the 20s yet this event is based on those parties. It's kind of funny and, and it's funny because everybody dies at the end. I saw a t-shirt that I said it says ain't no party like a Gatsby party because a Gatsby party don't stop until three people are dead and the everybody's disillusioned with their 20s age as a whole or something like that. It's pretty funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is rather ironic. The difference is fake alcohol and fake gambling. Well, hopefully we're doing it in a little safer manner. And it's not quite as, as crazy as it was back then. The people here are only pretending to drink moonshine, gamble, and act like flappers and gangsters of the 20s. It's not as wild. It's a good party. It's like more of a get-together than as I imagined the 20s to be. And yeah, we won't end it like that. Nobody's dying tonight, hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, this is an annual thing. The English department hasn't decided what they're going to do next year, but I'm thinking it's going to be another fun thing. Last year, they did the Jane Austen ball. So this is now an annual thing, so you can look forward to next year. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Victoria. Uh if you would like to find out more about the fundraiser, go to English.us. Lots of people were dancing. One, two, three. Hey guys. It's not often that you see a tractor on Aggie Boulevard, but last Friday many of them rolled through campus. Tra tractors drove down 8th East and then turned onto Aggie Boulevard where they found a cheering crowd on the sidewalk. The College of Agriculture and Applied Sciences holds a tractor parade every year at the end of Ag Week. Tractors of all sizes and colors made their way down the road. They pulled parade floats and some people even gave out candy. People seemed to enjoy themselves, but they might not know the history behind the parade. Uh, the tractor parade is an ongoing tradition at USU. Uh, it started out as a memorial for uh, the students that lost their lives on a field trip uh, and they put wreaths on on the tractors. Not often that you see it. Oh, I'm just kidding guys. The college also uses the parade to help promote their field of study. Thank you for joining us on this edition of ATV News. You can catch all the latest editions of ATV News at AggieTVNews.com. Have a great day Aggies.